Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day outside. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm happy to be here this morning in the house because I also am redeemed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, and you can tell them that we have been redeemed. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray. So, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless your holy and wonderful and matchless name. Hallelujah. Father God, I ask you right now to anoint me from the crown of my head to the soles of my very feet. Father God, I ask you to speak through me, Father God, as you speak to me, Father God. Let this word, Father God, not fall on stony ground, but let it fall on grit. Good ground, Father, that it would bring forth much fruit, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you. Amen. 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 Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been a little bit before I've been before you, but I'm going to go over a little bit about the book that I'm in, which is the book of Luke, and that's one of the Gospels in the new testament and last time i was before you my subject was was pregnant with greatness and born to be great so i'm going to go over that just a little bit with you and i'm not going to be before you very long but i have another word that i believe that's going to encourage us mm-hmm. i know it is Not that I just believe it, but I know it's going to encourage us because as I was studying yesterday, Friday, and this morning, it was encouraging me. So I know that it's going to encourage you. But the last time I was before you, we are pregnant with greatness and born to be great. Elizabeth, Mary, John, and Jesus. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. For thy prayer is heard. And we're going to get into that a little bit. So he said to fear not to Zachariah, Zacharias, because his wife Elizabeth was going to bear a son. And that did happen. And I'm just giving a little bit of a recap. And he also, the angel of the Lord, now this is the angel of the Lord that went to um, Zacharias, and then he also went to Mary and said to Mary, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great. Amen. Amen. So the angel of the Lord told both of these to fear not. And God is still telling us, fear not. The angels of the Lord can also speak to you and I. And God is hearing our prayers. But the key thing is we have to be praying. How is he going to hear us if we're not praying? Amen. Amen. Come <laughs> right. on now. Praise the Lord. So that was the kind of a just of, I just wanted to give that foundation a little bit. So I'm going to go on to my lesson for today. And I'm going to give the title a little bit after we get into it a little bit. And funny thing is, God, he, he really got jokes. When you want to do something, he'll, he, he'll change, his, change it up like he did with um, Pastor Prophet. I think it was last Sunday. Praise the Lord. Um, And I so wanted to talk about Mary and Martha. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to talk about Mary and Martha so bad because Mary, because Mary is, you know, about, you know, her father's business. She's serving, blah, blah, blah. And then, I mean, Martha. And then Mary, she's sitting at Jesus's feet. Not that either one of them was doing anything wrong, but they just both had something different that they were doing in their service to the Lord. 
But Martha was like, how he, how she gonna be doing this and she ain't doing nothing? Have you ever found yourself doing that? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise yeah. the Lord. But we all are different, unique in our own very own ways. And as Christians, we serve God the, the way he has us to serve him or the way really it's him because we he's inside of us mary was just sitting at his feet and gleaning and martha she wanted to be serving and, and doing all this other stuff you know but not that she was doing anything wrong that was just my thing so i really wanted to talk about that maybe i'll get to talk about that the next time but god was speaking to me and he wanted me to talk about the lord's prayer Mm. <laughs> oh. the lord's prayer teaches us how to pray and leads us into a deeply a deeply meaningful way of talking to and hearing from god so he must have been saying something to me so yes, he was. yes. <laughs> he's saying talk to me Cherie, mm. so that i can talk back amen and we're gonna go to the scriptures and Luke, Luke 1 and 4, and then we're going to, later in the lesson, we're going to get to 9 and 10. So Luke 11, 1 through 4 says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Luke 11 and 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then... We're going to jump down to Luke 11 and 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ten, for every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. But I'm going to go to, the, to Matthew, because that's the, the prayer that most people hear. And it says in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, And after this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we're going to really get into the first section of this prayer today. All religions, if you notice, teach their followers to pray, right? Buddhism. Buddhists worship at temples or monasteries where they meditate and pray. Some also set up shrines at home to worship, or we've even seen them in, in their businesses, especially at the nail shop, right? When you walk in the door, right? They have their, their shrines or even um, in a business. If they are Buddhist, you, that's the first thing you notice when you walk in their doors. Islamics kneel five times a day. They chant a specific prayer over and over, reciting prescribed prayers and phrases from the Quran. Jews pray three times a day, morning, noon, and night. We are praying to a risen savior. Buddha is dead, right? Some of those other gods that they're praying to, they're dead. We are praying to a risen savior, Jesus Christ who died and rose again and he lives. 
There is no specific time of day required. We don't have to set up no shrine. We can have a prayer closet, but we don't have to set up a shrine for anybody to see because what they, what people need to see is the Jesus in us. Amen. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing, meaning we don't have to have a specific time of the day. We need to be praying. Although it said it said to rise early because, you know, when you rise early, that's when you really can hear from God. Amen. That's just my perspective. Amen. So some people can hear him at night, but when we're praying without ceasing and Jesus taught us this model prayer, it didn't say that we have to pray exactly those words. It's just a model prayer, right? The Lord's Prayer is a model prayer that gives a foundation of the key ways to pray and talk with our Heavenly Father. And I guess this is a word that maybe needs to be brought back to our attention. Jesus taught his disciples to pray because they asked. Saints, it's time to pray. Some new Christians, and I remember being this way, thinking that I didn't know how to pray because I hear, I heard how other people were praying. But then when I learned the model prayer, okay, that makes sense. Some new Christians, they'll say, I don't know how to pray. Well, guess where we can lead them to? We can lead them right to this model prayer. And the Lord's Prayer. And if that's the way, because that's how I kind of, I remember being taught just, and most of us learned that prayer as little kids, right? Mm -hmm. Even if we weren't going to church. That's right. There are a few components to the Lord's Prayer, which we are going to get into and talk about today. And I did mention that. We are going to talk about the first two sections, which is starting with our Father. Who's our Father? Amen. And yes, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We must reverence God when we begin to pray. Before we start asking for things and what we need, what we want. Amen. How many of us, when we go, when we're going through, we just start telling God what we need? I'm just gonna be real. God, I need you to fix this. I need you to, before I even reverence him or worship him. I start telling him what I need, what I want, what, what can you do? You know, I can't keep going through this, but I haven't even given him reverence for who he is and where he is. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is what kids do. Kids do that. Daddy, I need, mama, I need. <laughs> Although some kids know exactly how to get what they want. Because they know how to say, Ma, you are so beautiful. Mama, you know, they, they know how to do it, right? Some of them know how. <laughs> we as Christians must reverence God first because He is holy. It said, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy, set apart, he's sacred, he's blessed, consecrated, Jesus, Jesus consecrated himself, himself, amen, because he was praying. And then the disciples wanted to know, teach us, teach us how to be that way. And that's what he wants, he wants us to be his way. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. The Lord's prayer may be known by many, but maybe known by many, but do we really understand it? Some of us don't even understand the Lord's prayer because the world has taken prayer out of so many things, just about everything really, right? We must reverence him in his holy place, his dwelling place his dwelling place in heaven. I hear Mother Rosie, which is my mother, 
and she always prays this way when she starts. She says, oh, Heavenly Father that sits upon a throne. If you ever hear her pray, that's the way she starts her prayer all the time. She's addressing God for who he is. She's reverencing him for, reverencing him for who he is and where he is. He sits on a throne. Amen. There is reverence here. He's in heaven. He knows what we're going through. <clears throat> he knows what we're going to pray before we even pray it. He knows what we need before we even ask. Just like our parents when we were kids, they knew what we needed before we even asked. A lot of times we're just asking for wants and not needs. Amen. And the Lord wants to give us exactly what we need, not always what we want. Amen. I say this, and I, I tell, I've told women, you know, if I if if I were to, if I were to, if I was to get the husband that I want wanted, I wouldn't be still married because God gave me exactly exactly what I needed. Amen. When we talk to one another or call someone, we usually address them by their name, right? Mm -hmm. We don't start telling them what we want or need or why we called. We would say, hello, pastor. Hello, deaconess. Hello, sister Ijoma. Hello, sister Tracy. Hello, pastor prophet. We address them, give them reverence, amen? When I call my husband, I say, hi, honey. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Funny thing is, there is something to that, honey. There's love there, right? So when, we, when we're calling or talking to Jesus, there's that love that is there. Not just, oh, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Mm -hmm. Fix, fix, fix. <laughs> but I'm encouraging us. Mm -hmm. I'm encouraging us. Praise the Lord. He is the head of our lives. Jesus is the head of our lives. Mm -hmm. He is holy. And we must address him as such when we begin to pray. Heavenly Father that sits upon a throne. Hallowed be thy name. Your name is holy, O God. You know, we worship, we worship him. Amen? And then we can begin to praise him. Verse 10 in Matthew says, thy kingdom come, and this is where we're gonna get into the meat of it. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is where we will get into the meat of the lesson. Say this with me. Things are about to get better. That is the title of my lesson. Things are about to get better. Tell yourself, self, things are about to get better. Self, things are about to get better. Ooh, glory to God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, if you're in there on Zoom, if somebody's in the room with you, praise the Lord, or tell it to the next room, amen? Speak it in the house, hallelujah. Things are about to get better, hallelujah. No matter how dark things seem now, things are about to get better. I'm encouraging us today because I believe things are about to get better. How many of us feel like we are currently going through some dark and rough times right now? I'm raising my hand. Thank you, Jesus. Even in the midst of some of the blessings, because we still woke up this morning. We still are in our right mind. We still got our faculties, as I hear Pastor Hackett saying. We still got our lambs, amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
we're going through some rough times right now, even in the midst of the blessings. There are things going on that we would prefer not to be dealing with right now. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Yeah, that's right. I hurt my back. How did that happen? Well, I know how it happened, but really, that happened to me. Uh, you know, um, you know. There, I can say a lot. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you all could too. My husband dealing with high blood pressure doesn't hurt his finger. Sister Tracy. Hurt her arm, she burned her legs. Saints, things are about to get better. Yes, they are. Jesus is petition. Jesus petitions the coming of the kingdom. He petitions the coming of the kingdom. Matthew 6 and 10, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it. is in heaven. Luke 11 and 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Things are about to get better. Thy will be done. Things are about to get better. As it is in heaven, so it is in earth. Things are about to get better. Praise the Lord. We can do the same as this is how he is teaching us to pray. All they do in heaven, and I'm talking about the angels, amen, the host that's in heaven. They perform the will of God. The angel came to Zacharias. The angel came to Mary. The angel came to Sharif. The angels can be put on assignment. Not just that they're just in heaven, but we can call them, amen, and put them on assignment. Because we have the Holy Ghost, the living Savior, the living risen Jesus living on the inside of us. Amen? They worship God. We must worship God. They do as he says. We must do as he says. They go out and perform his will. We must do the will of God. They serve him. However that is, they are obedient to his will and his word. We must be obedient to his will and his word. His will is obeying his commandments, living according to his will and his power. Amen. We have the power of God living on the inside of us. He also says there is a way. And we already know there's only one way, the kingdom of God. What is the spiritual meaning of kingdom? Because I was thinking I was in my sleep slumbers. Like, you know, there's kingdoms and people have to abide by those kingdoms. They have to, you know, go by those rules of that kingdom. The kingdom of God, also called kingdom of heaven in Christianity, the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king or the fulfillment on earth of God's will. The phrase occurs frequently in the New Testament, primarily used by Jesus Christ in the first three gospels. We can live as kings and queens right here on earth. They will be, thy will be done. It says as it is in heaven. Their will, his will is all already established for us. His will is already saints established for us in heaven. We can and he wants us to live his will for us right here on earth. Catch it. As it is in heaven, as it is on earth. The key to have a kingdom, the key is to have a kingdom mindset. A 
a way of thinking that recognizes God's hand on our lives, on your life, my life. Amen. I started looking up the kingdom of God and I seen that it appeared so many times in the book of Luke. I was like, wow, I kept reading scripture and I was like, oh, I'm going to put this down. But there were so many. You just got to go look them up for yourself. Amen. Go to the book of Luke. Look up the kingdom of God and look up all those scriptures, you know, the ones, you know, that you want to look at. The gospel of Luke refers to the kingdom of God 32 times, more often than in other in, than the other three gospels. Matthew uses the term kingdom 53 times, but writes of the kingdom of God only four times. And the same number of mentions as in Mark's gospel. But in Luke, it refers to the kingdom of God 32 times. Luke 17, 21, and this is in the King James Version. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Oh, I was like, wow. That one stood out. That's Luke 17 and 21. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. This is so powerful to me. His kingdom already lives inside of me. And one thing that I say in my coaching business, you were born and created to succeed. Success lives deep down on the inside of you. The kingdom of God is already in me. And that's what the word says. That just gives me a, a little bit more boost. I'm encouraging us today. I have his Holy Spirit. How can the kingdom of God not live inside of me? I have the Holy Ghost. Amen. This brings me now to Luke 11 and 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 10, verse 10 says, for everyone that's asketh, receive. Receive it. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. And that is all within the, the Lord's Prayer in the book of Luke. Say this with me again. Things are about to get better. Amen. Tell yourself, self, things are about to get better. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, things are about to get better. Amen? Because I can ask, I can seek, I can knock. When I ask, it's given unto me. When I seek, I find it. Amen? According to his will, his kingdom that already lives inside of me. When I seek, I find. When I knock, the doors are open. God spoke to me a couple weeks ago, and I think, I, I believe, I told Sister Felicia Turner. I said, you know, God spoke to me, and he said, doors are about to open that you didn't even knock on. Now, it don't feel like it. It may not look like it, but I trust and believe God, because now I know what's been brought back to me, that the kingdom of God is already in me. Praise the Lord. And I know that things are about to get better. Sheree, things are about to get better. This quote of scripture encourage us, encourages us to ask God for what we need and have faith that he will give it to us according to his will. Seek. Searching for God. 
We got to seek God. And when we're praying, we're seeking God. For his will for our lives. Amen. His righteousness. He's holy. His presence and his will. When we pray to God and, and, and we're praying according to the model prayer, God's presence can come in. Amen. And we can ask for what we want. He already knows what we need. He'll, we can knock, seek, ask. God says, In Luke 12, 32, fear not, because some of us have some fear going on, even though we should be having, Lord help us, help me, faith over fear. But some things are just going on. But we have to know that God, it is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. He's saying, fear not, little flock. Fear not, Sheree. Fear not, Elder Stubblefield. Fear not, Sister Tracy. Fear not, Sister Ejoma. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And the kingdom is within you. Saints, everything we need is on the inside of us. We just need to have a talk with God. Stop focusing, focusing so much on the pain. I remember when I was in that ER, all I could do was focus on that, those spasms happening. I didn't want to think about nothing else, but <laughs> I'm laughing about it now, but I, but I was like, thing that kept coming to me, I was saying, Jesus, take the wheel, take the wheel. I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. But I was still so focused on that pain. And sometimes we're so focused on the pain, we forget about the person, the savior that can release that pain. Amen. Say this with me. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. Things are better present self things are better i said i'm gonna speak this to myself every day things sheree things are better they may not look like it but they are tell yourself tell your neighbor speak it things are better praise the lord was short, but I believe powerful. And I thank God for bringing back to my remembrance, the model prayer. He is so holy. And we have to reverence him as such. Amen. Thank you so much. Fear not. Put our angels on assignment because things are better. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand.